we could talk a little bit about epic this is gonna be a shorter one because like i'm still feeling sick but like we did watch the troy saga part mm -hmm. and um i have to say so far i like the adaptation um my thing about um greek mythology and reading source material is that a lot of times duty is so emphasized it's hard to see like the emotions of the character and um so the first kind of animated is a combo of two songs it's um the horse and the infant and just a man and it kind of goes from them sacking troy um and they put to um they put a Styanax's death like immediately during the sack of troy um which um the version that I'm the most familiar with is the Trojan Women by Euripides. And in that one, Odysseus isn't the one who directly throws him off of the walls. He's just the one who says we have to do this because he's going to grow up one day and want to get vengeance for his kingdom. Um, and so I don't know that he was necessarily the person who did it in that version. There are a mixture of like reports on what happened because, of course, oral history gets like really um, crazy. Where a lot of times it's actually Achilles' son, Neoptolemus. Mm -hmm. um, and like sometimes, like, I found that there's one version that isn't even in existence anymore. Like, we don't have it. That is the version where Odysseus is the person who does it directly. Um, but Either way, he he had a hand in it, and that's always something that's been hard for me to reconcile as a fan of Odysseus because he is one of the more interesting heroes in like any Greek epic to me. Um, he's one of the more three dimensional ones, and so thinking too, like he he like had his infant son as his reason that he didn't want to go to war. It really was a big part of his his like saga of joining the war he pretended to be insane so that he wouldn't have to go he yoked his plow with like an <laughs> oxen and a donkey or something like that two different animals so that like it didn't drive straight and he was um i think he was sewing like sand or something like that i forget but it, he was not doing something that made sense on his plow and um, so to trick him to show he wasn't insane, somebody's like, let's put baby Telemachus in front of his plow. And if he stops, obviously he's in his right mind. Obviously he's in his right mind. Um, and he stopped, of course. So mm -hmm. that's how it was like, okay, you have to go, dude. Um, and I love that that first one really plays on that ideal of like, this is the same age I left my own son at um seeing him not happy with the fact that this ha has to happen they kind of had zeus be the person like telling him you know you got to do this because he's going to grow up and he's going to do terrible things um and it was an interesting play on it um i do love that like the characterization of odysseus there was like i really don't want to do this like but it's duty mm -hmm. I and especially if you're gonna do a musical about the Odyssey, it has to be all about Odysseus and like his character mm -hmm. and who he is as a person, like what he's the ethics and like values he has in the beginning and how much he has to renege on some of that stuff to just like survive in order to get home through all the all the years of the Odyssey. And um and you do kind of have to have like a starting point like when you have like a character going through that sort of story you have to have like a starting point of who they actually are before all this bad stuff happens to them that like changes them somehow yeah and so i thought that showing him literally like begging in the song like please don't i please don't make me do this i don't want to kill the baby <laughs> yeah but, you know but looking at it and being like i know i'm supposed to kill the baby because the baby might grow up and try to murder me one day but i really why are you making me kill this baby and and also just like the whole we talked about this a little bit before we started filming this today but the whole thing of like the gods asking you to do things that 
you really don't want to do, but you feel like, but in these sort of stories, people feel like they have to do them. Yeah. Because the gods are asking them to, that it's always fun to compare this stuff to Percy Jackson because Percy tells the gods no 40 billion times. And they literally have to get down on their knees and like beg him sometimes to get him to do anything. If you're Apollo in Trials of Apollo, he literally basically closes the door in your face and tells you to get the fuck out and and things like that so it's like he doesn't have any respect for them necessarily in that way like if the gods are asking him to do something that he really doesn't want to do he goes through a whole thing of figuring out if he really should do it like with the prophecy and everything it takes him many years before he gets to the point where he's like okay i'm just gonna do this um but he but you see him going through that whole process of deciding where odysseus is just like well the god said I have to kill this baby, so I guess I'm just going to kill the baby. Yeah, Ashley is saying the gods of Percy Jackson are bound to will of demigods carrying out actions the gods are barred from, which gives the demigods power. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I mean, somewhat like the gods are of the um, the Iliad, which I, I mean, it's you can't place the, the first song of epic in the Iliad because they didn't get to the sacking of Troy in the Iliad. But at least in the Iliad, we see um, like the gods directly intervening. They go onto the battlefield and stuff. Let's see. Epic relies on the idea the gods are able to impose will and make life harder because they think it's fun. Um, and I mean, that's that's somewhat true in Percy Jackson too. But mm-hmm. you're right in that like the demigods can just say no. They can just like not do it. Their life is going to be miserable if they don't do it though, which like you know, the gods do have the power to make things more miserable, at least. Um, well, I, that's why this is one of those things why I love Percy Jackson is that the demigods in all of these stories always had the option to say no. They just like felt like they didn't. But with a story that's written by Rick Riordan, he's trying to point that out by being like, no, these demigod people always had, they have a lot of power actually in that role you as the like abused one you actually have a lot of power to tell the other person who's controlling you no and to like use them you can manipulate them right back sometimes and usually with stories this is like a whole like elitist classism thing but usually in a lot of the adaptations of the greek mythology stories they like want you to like the gods or at least they present them as like nice nicer people Mm -hmm. and so they don't bring up the fact that like actually these people they're asking them to do things making them do these things they don't want to do those people could just tell them no and that would immediately make them look like a bad person and if you want to believe that the gods are like more like these fun like almost like overly hormonal teenagers that never grow up then you don't want to see them that way. Um, but that's always there. And that, I think that's why you, it, you can see it in like Epic too. Like Odysseus could have just told Zeus, I'm not going to kill this fucking baby. You do it <laughs> if you think it's that important for this baby to die. But he was just like conditioned at that point that if the gods ask you to say, yeah, if they ask you to do something, you have to do it. Yeah. And it's like, you don't actually though, you can tell them no. <laughs> Yeah, um, and it's it's hard because this one's like much more classical in its in its treatment of that. Where like you have to imagine there would be consequences for going against the gods at least a little bit, and the consequences don't seem as dire in Percy Jackson for going against the gods. Um, and um, I don't know though, like. The whole humanistic part of it, because I have to wonder as, you know, a person with high empathy, if like there were people during wartime, during a lot of these ancient battles where you did did have to do hand-to-hand combat, and sometimes you were fighting boys who were barely old enough to hold up their spear and sword, you know? Like sometimes you did have to go through and sack cities and pull out women and children. Like... How many of them actually were like, this is fucking awful. I don't want to do this. You know, I don't think they think about that a lot. A lot of them do, because that's just what that's what happens to people. 
Yeah. Like no, no person can sit there doing horrible things and seeing, especially if you literally like see it, like if you see how they're hurt, how you're hurting innocent people, you can't <laughs> sit there and watch it. Like that's why, you know, the worst stuff that like people think of that humanity has done is mainly when maniacal dictators come up with ways to do horrible things to people in mass numbers that where the people where their fighters don't have to directly do it to them anymore because mm -hmm. their fighters can't handle doing that and they and so that they are like instead of being like maybe we should stop they're like what if we find some way of doing this where they don't have to directly do it anymore so that our fighters stop like having so much ptsd that they can't fight anymore and yeah. so like Absolutely, there were people back then that were feeling that way too. It's just that the in the stories, you can't like kind of memorialize these battles and make them sound like these amazing, fantastical events if you talk about those people's perspective, <laughs> because that immediately like makes all the, it's like that whole, um, I forget what Disney movie it is where all of a sudden they're like, Good feelings gone, <laughs> and that's like exactly what would happen. Was it Mulan? I I can't, I'm gonna find the clip and put it it's in. It's like girl worth fighting for, and then they come to that village that's like completely <laughs> ransacked, and it's like never mind. Okay, no, and so that that's it's just like the perspective of what is usually shown. That's why I love a lot of the Greek mythology retellings that people have been doing the last however many years, especially because they're ones that, that usually, I think it's really funny because a lot of like classes, people like classes, like professors and stuff that I see sometimes don't like these things because they show the gods as being jerks mm -hmm. and they don't show the heroes as like these amazing stoic figures. Instead, they show them as who they really were or, like the destruction that the gods actually would do if they made those sort of choices and i feel like that's what you should be showing <laughs> if you're going to keep retelling these sort of stories because that's the stuff that's way more like accurate to what most people go through in life uh than like the god's perspective like nobody wants to like humanize necessarily the like all, all powerful beings like making people do things that they don't want to do yeah. that just that don't have to deal with any of the consequences and just like keep having parties and getting drunk and while they just like play with humans lives for fun because they think it's entertaining and so i really liked how this this is also going in line with that of like showing odysseus as a very because like you can't do something about the odyssey and then set up odysseus as like a really nice like hero guy, a really nice person who like just wants to go home to his wife and his kid. And it's like a really nice guy. And like through like the first few songs, like he starts like having a hard time with everything that they're doing and his, I don't even know who his friend was in that one song. Um, but his friend is like trying to make him be more optimistic and don't give up and don't like, don't be like sad all the time. Things are gonna work out. Everything's gonna be like, you don't tell the story of Odysseus and and set him up as like the hero, not expecting for people to get really fucking angry at the gods. Yeah. Because of how horrible they are to him. Yeah, um, I mean, everything he goes through is shitty and only really Athena cares about him, so just is how it is yeah yeah um let's see so that was the first song i mean the only other thing i want to say about that and i know i told you this story i don't know if i've told it on this podcast um i had to read the iliad multiple times in um in college along with the odyssey in both english and like i didn't translate the iliad but i had to know the first few lines in greek at one point um and with the Iliad, at one point we were reading it while I was pregnant. The class was called like Love and Eros in Ancient Literature or something like that. Um, and William loved that class in utero. That was like his most active time. Um, Hermes helps for the plot and the tea. That's what Ashley said. Yes. Um, yeah. So um, 
I had to read the Iliad while pregnant. And I remember specifically during that class, the teacher called out this scene in the Iliad where Hector comes and he checks on all of his women. He checks on his mom. He checks on um, Andromache, his wife. And he's still like fully suited up. He has his armor on. He has his helmet on. And when Astyanax sees him, he starts crying. And so Hector just like giggles and takes it off. And he's like, look, it's me, it's dad. Um, and in that part, they're talking about how Astyanax is doomed, how like the whole family is doomed, even though they're having this beautiful moment right there. And pregnant 21 year old me was just like in tears. And like, I wrote Jake a whole letter. I wonder if he still has it because he keeps almost everything I write for him. Um, I wrote this whole letter of how like, could we name our son as Dianax? <laughs> like, I didn't know William was a boy yet. I was like, if we have son, can we name him as Dianax? Because um, poor Dianax got thrown off the walls of Troy and he didn't deserve it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just laughing because first off, the fact that you like wrote that out in a letter is so like, like just you like old school and like a, like 21 year old you is of course like writing letters to <laughs> when most people don't do that kind of stuff anymore anyway and especially when you're 21 and but then i'm like imagining it because just from what i know of jake i'm just imagining like like libra jake coming home and like reading this letter from you being like i want to name our baby this like weird greek name and him being like how do I tell her no without making her sad? <laughs> well, that's the thing is he just makes it everything a joke. Like, and so he was like, yeah, no, nobody's going to know how to say that or spell that. <laughs> like, Yeah. Honestly, when um, I have a, a year and a half old niece and my sister and her partner took the really long time before they decided on a name, it wasn't until Lexi was like, I don't know, she was probably like eight months pregnant before she really like fully like picked a name. And every time we would see each other, we would end up talking about different names and stuff. And every time we would talk about it, all three of us would be like, how would kids bully her for this name? Because we all were bullied at school. And so we were trying to think of something that doesn't have something in it that would inherently make it easier for kids to make fun of her just based on her name alone. Yeah. <laughs> he also vetoed Hector. So uh he's like, I don't know why Hector just feels like a kid who's gonna get bullied. I feel like even though you are like half Mexican, I feel like everyone would just assume that he was Mexican with that sort of name and then his entire life he would have to sit there and explain like his racial makeup to everybody and yeah. be like i am 25 percent, and it would be like oh my god let's just stop this now <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah so william is actually named for jake's grandpa and that was the right choice like because he had five years with jake's grandpa and like it was a very touching moment when we told him about the name oh that is yeah. really cute yeah so um let's see um and then the next the next song was, um, shoot, why am I, is it Full Speed Ahead, I think was the yeah. name of it. Um, and that was them, they were sailing, they, um, they realized they were about to be out of supplies and they need to go pillage. Um, and they, they skip over, I'm pretty sure chronologically, the island of the Sicones is, is first, and I don't remember a lot about this, so, like, it really is one of those chapters that, like, sometimes when you're reading in a classics class, they'll have you skip because it's, like, not really anything, um, and most people do skip right to the Lotus Eaters, which is the next song, Open Arms. Um, I don't have too much to say about that other than I don't necessarily understand the choice of turning the lotus eaters into those little creature things. I mean, they're <laughs> cute. But, yeah. yeah. I feel like that was definitely like an artistic choice. Like the, whoever was the one who, who made the animation for that, like we watched it, but I still don't remember their username. Um, whoever like drew that out just thought like let's make them kind of weird and cute just to make this more interesting yeah the main thing i thought of just because i know fandoms 
is the song when they were all all the guys were singing on the boat and then that song i was like how many fan fiction has been written about these characters <laughs> Like, just, I want to look it up almost to see. There has to be a bunch of them just from those two songs. Yeah. <laughs> because that's just, that's what fandoms do. They always write, where they always end up writing stories about, like, two white men hooking up. And I'm like, I know there has to be some. Just yeah. tell me which ones. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I am so uninvested in Odysseus's crew, to be honest, as, like, somebody who's read the Odyssey, because, like, I know they all die. Like, I hate to say it, but, like, <laughs> it, it's hard to stay invested in them, so that's, like, I don't memorize the names, and so every time that they, a name was brought up, I'm like, I know I've read that name, but I don't remember that person. <laughs> it's like, you're all gonna die soon. I think it's best that I keep distance from you emotionally exactly <laughs> yeah there's not a single person on the crew that i like really took that much stock in besides odysseus mm -hmm. yeah okay so that's open arms and then the last one was um warriors of wisdom right something like that yep warriors yeah. of the mind warriors of the mind yes because it's the athena song warriors yeah. of the mind um, and in that one, they kind of gave a backstory of Odysseus that Athena laid out a challenge of a boar that needed to be caught. And he's the one who came up with the plan. Like you see him planning it out in the animation. And then he's the one who ends up taking it down because the plan actually doesn't work and it, it breaks free of the ropes that they had. Um, and like, I do like the idea of Athena watching him since he was little because it's always just kind of like understood yeah she just favors him because of his cunning like most of the epics will leave it at that it's just like yeah he embodies everything she likes so that's why she likes him um when you know part of you starts to wonder okay but is he like that way because she favors him or is she does she favor him because he's like that way like it could be a circular thing yeah like does he because at least the first song of this whole thing Odysseus always, I, this is funny because I don't remember very much from my childhood in general, but for some reason, when I was in sixth grade and we did all of the Greek and Roman mythology stuff, I of course loved it because I was a queer, neurodivergent child, so of course I loved it. Um, but I remember and when I was in school then, we watched this like multi-part series about the Odyssey why do i remember so much of that movie <laughs> like i don't remember anything about my childhood but i still remember watching that in on multiple days watching this like like mini series that was probably on like the on like tv in the 90s about the odyssey and i remember but i think i remember it because i really liked odysseus and because he always kind of struck me as a very like nice good like kind person that was being like pushed to the absolute limit by like everyone and maybe that's why i always remember him because that was also my life at the time and but i don't know but either way like i could see him as somebody who would try to do things to like make her happy and that's literally like this song like the end of the song is her basically is her saying like don't let me down and he's like god damn it. <laughs> like yeah. god damn it like what does that mean and he's just like that's so much pressure that you just like popped in to be like don't fail me and you're like okay um but somebody like that who just is like a nice person that wants to help everybody it would be very easy to get him i think to do things that he normally wouldn't because he knows that 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 will make Athena happy and he doesn't want to make her upset with him. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like it's more that, that like he ends up doing stuff that he normally wouldn't because and that's kind of Athena's whole thing is she likes, I think that's what she likes. Like she likes the idea of kind of molding people into being who she thinks mm -hmm. It's that whole thing of like, I see the potential in you yeah You're trying to kind of um move them into being the kind of person that she thinks they could be that would make them more like successful because she thinks that the way that she thinks they should be is like the best way 
And so I could see her being like that with him of like, I want to make him more like tough mm -hmm. and not be crying over killing babies <laughs> and, and, and like make him more like a hardened like soldier because he has potential for being like a really good soldier and strategizing and winning all these battles and mm -hmm. things like that. I could, I could see that being a thing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but like to take it back to Percy Jackson stuff, we also see that sometimes a part of that is caring about your fellow soldiers because that's Percy's biggest strength. We just read, you know, Titan's Curse, and at the end, he takes on the burden of the sky because he's like, you know what, none of us are going to be able to defeat Atlas, so I gotta let Artemis, you know, jump into this battle. And, um, that's just who he is, you know, he sees people for their strengths. And I would say Odysseus does too, a lot of times, like Odysseus does recognize everybody's strengths, but like, sometimes it, it does feel very cold and calculated when you're reading his character in the original source material. And mm -hmm. that's, that's what she likes. Um, but the Odyssey, of course, is, is the part where he gets more humanized because it's literally just about him. It ends up being just him. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but yeah, so, so far I am down with this interpretation. I, I think that um, it's, there's a lot of love put into it and you can feel it. Like, and even the animations, like, felt like there was a lot of love in that too. Um, it's nice to see people adapt these things. The Odyssey is one that I feel gives a lot of people inspiration. Because aside from that TV movie that you've mentioned, there's Oh Brother Where Art Thou was inspired by the Odyssey. Um, I forgot the name of it, but it was one that had like Nicole Kidman and um, what was it? I think it's called Cold Mountain or something like that. That one was inspired by the Odyssey. Oh yeah, I remember. I'm remembering that movie. I didn't watch it, but I it won like Oscars or was nominated for them or something. I had no idea that it was based on the Odyssey, but that's not surprising. Yeah, like more loosely, of course. Oh, brother, where art thou? Is a little bit closer, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because I never saw the the movie that you're talking about, but those were the kinds of things that my professors would show or like point to. Um, I'm thinking more my high school Latin teacher did it than anybody else. <laughs> this makes me want to see if I can somehow find that movie. Again, I don't know how, where it would be <laughs> anymore, but I can at least try to see if it still exists and if it's anywhere near as good as, as like sixth grade me thought it was. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the, the thing I really like about this musical is that it's completely online. And that like the creator of it, I don't know that much about him at all. I just like Googled it to know like what order we should listen to stuff into. And I was curious and saw that he started writing it in like 2019, I think when he was in college okay. and he just like wanted to write a musical that reminded him of like the video games that he plays that he likes and he wanted it to be similar to that and so a lot of times the animation style is kind of similar to like that because they know that's what he was going for but like it's very much like a complete and total passion project that he's done like um that one girl that was mad at me about calypso she was bringing up videos that he posted on tiktok in 2022 which was like the first videos he ever posted where he was talking about writing the songs about Calypso and Odysseus that just came out now. Yeah. So like that's two years of like work and planning and stuff. And I don't know how long it was between 2019 and when the first like saga came out, but it was recently within the last year or so, I'm pretty sure. And so that's a long time to be work. And like, we know that from doing stuff like this, like it's hard to work on something and not like, show it to the world when you're excited about it because you just want to like share it that's so much he put in so much work and it's just fun to yeah. see that it's all like on youtube that the artists that are doing were like inspired by it and just started doing animations from it and they're all just like normal 
artist is like completely outside of any sort of corporate anything ever. There's none of that. And so you don't have to worry about something weird happening to it one day or it getting canceled. It's just purely like if the guy who writes it gets exhausted. <laughs> Yeah. is like the only thing you have to wonder about but since it's a passion project he probably won't get tired of doing it until he you know finishes it and moves on to another passion project so that's how that's like when you have passion for something you can do it forever um and so it's just fun to see somebody like that get that amount of like attention and and um and all very positive attention that's just i really like that because that's what that's like the best kind of stuff that you can find is people just doing stuff like that, not because they're necessarily trying to make money off of it, but just because they love it. And if they like somehow make money off of it, they're like, that's a weird accident. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that was cool to see somebody so into this stuff that he just started writing. And I'm just like imagining like a college student in his dorm writing like a musical about the Odyssey. <laughs> That's just such a that's just such a, a cool thing to decide to do one day. <laughs> it is, yeah. So I'm excited to watch more of it, um, especially because like this week was such crap. And honestly, if I would have gotten to it sooner, I feel like that would have lifted my spirits. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will be something that fun to look forward to when there isn't anything else to look forward to. Like after the D23 thing came out, I was like. There's nothing happy for me to look forward to right now that I know is actually going to happen sometime soon. So I'm going to have to make up something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need something. And uh, a new musical thing like this will be fun to just see different, slightly different interpretations of the same characters, but they're very, but they're similar enough to Percy's stuff that they just remind me of why I like Greek mythology in the first place. 